Nobody can see us, but I'm wrapped up in a ball right now. He is. He's got his knees. <laughs> Just like listening. He's got his I'm like, oh God. <laughs> History. I'd like to follow me down the rabbit hole. History. I'd like to. Frankly, I want to know. Hey, welcome to Hilf. History I'd like to fuck with Don Brody. I'm Don Brody. And this is part two of the Donner Party with my guest, the hilarious and kind of vulnerable at the moment, Andy Kraft. If you have not yet listened to part one, you're going to want to. And for those of you returning, welcome back to the party. At this point, you've already heard about the disastrous choice the Donner Party made when they took the Hastings cutoff, a shortcut that was anything but... You've been with them as they've slowly lost their stuff and a few have lost their lives. You remember the murder of John Snyder by James Reed and Reed's subsequent banishment. And can we please give a hell yeah to our man Stanton, the single childless dude who rode all the way to his own salvation and then returned heroically with much needed supplies. Yes. Now, a fair warning. Their journey up to this point has been a fucking picnic. Okay, the worst lies ahead. And I doubt you've gotten this far without being aware of the dark history that's coming, but buckle up for the death, heartbreak, and of course, the promised cannibalism. But don't worry, I'm not gonna hype or exaggerate anything. As the author of my primary source said himself, it's not necessary because the truth is sufficiently terrible. Hmm, let's get started. We are back. I have poured my friend Andy a shot. Thank you very much. And this is a toast, not only to you, my good friend, oh, thank but to the Dahmer party. That's right. Oh, these poor Dahmers. You, I know what they're about to go through. You don't. But let's drink to their health either oh, no. way. Oh, no. These poor Dahmers. Oh, man. Ooh, it burns. It's great. It feels good. Love it. Thank you very much. Oh, this my is, pleasure. This is riveting. During the break, I was mm. telling Dawn, and I need to say it over and over again, <laughs> that she has these sheets of notes in front of her that she is barely looking at. <laughs> this is all just coming from her, and I am, I've am i been sitting here just staring at you, impressed, <laughs> because, one, I'm riveted by all of this, because I'm an idiot, and I don't know anything <laughs> about it. And two, just I'm just like, you, you're just a history book with all of this. It's... It's Listen, incredible. That means the world to me. It is truly the highest compliment <laughs> that so, I could ever so get. So impressed and just. I is... love this stuff, Andy. I really love it. And part of the reason why I started Hilf is because I have never encountered an element from history that hasn't curled my toes and given me some keyhole perspective into something that seems to me so dramatic, so torrid so surprising so illuminating so something Mm -hmm. you know and i think everything from honest to god the history of lipstick to the history of the donner party like i've i've just yet to find something that i think is not worth exploring more and may may i never find it (laughs) i hope this ends with them creating lipstick and that's where this (laughs) goes to and you were just like you're just planting little hints you know, there is a certain shade of red oh, around no. the mouth. Oh, 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 oh Well, thank you for that. It really does fill my sails. Thank I you. love this stuff. Let me tell you this. You're going to love this the way you love roadkill when you really see a great splatter. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? You hate oh, it. Oh, you don't no. need to see it. Yeah, you didn't even want, want to see it. I don't want this at all. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to love this. Like, <laughs> yes. No, no. It's like this. Do you remember the time that Harry Styles fell off the stage? Yes. Did you see that? Yes, okay. I did see that. I love her. Everyone loves Harry yeah. Styles. And nobody wants to see Harry Styles get hurt. But you can't look away. Is it that sort of thing? But you're gonna watch you're gonna him watch fall it. off the stage. It's like the guy at the the they did. There's like a YouTube video of a Nutcracker. That's this guy running around on stage and he falls off. I've watched it a thousand times. Absolutely. I don't like watching people get no. hurt. No, but it's here it's we go. So entertaining. It's so entertaining. And oh, what no. I think we're gonna learn here with um, the Donner Party from this point forward in their story is a deeper gore and horror for the tragedy that you probably have heard before and that you could have imagined. I may have heard it before, but I obviously don't remember any of this. (laughs) And a depth of appreciation and respect for certain individuals in this story because there are heroes a-coming. Oh, man. 
This is gonna be a lot, isn't it? This is gonna. <laughs> this, I'm like nervous. I'm sitting here. Probably I learned about this, and then I was so traumatized by it that mm. I did that thing where you just forget about it. I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm so Listen, excited. you are free. Feel free to jump in if you fun, okay. suddenly feel a little tingle of, of familiarity. You are welcome okay. to to jump in. I've just Let been me... sitting here staring at you because I'm just I am enthralled with this story. I'm, I'm so I'm so glad. I feel I'm I'm doing. You can't see me. I'm putting my hand up to the ceiling like Mr. Donna. Give me give me power, Mr. Donna. <laughs> Um, so let us bring us back. Let us let us regroup with our with our friends and and recap where we are, where we uh, are returning to the story. It is it is about October, okay, of eighteen forty six. We our man Stanton, he back girl, yeah. and boy did he come back at just the right point. He comes back with seven mules full of food. Go, oh, we're hungry. He's got two Native American guides. They're gonna know how to get us out of here. We've all been struggling all this time. Here we are. Homeward bound. Okay. They stop, as we've said, to sit and eat, as I would. I didn't tell you, I'd probably do the same fucking thing. I'd be like, are you kidding me? He's going to get stranded with them. That just hit me. This poor guy rushed back to get fucked. Oh, no. And he doesn't have any loved ones there. He did oh, it. He no. met these. He met them. He met, picture this. Here's what it is. You and me and Rachel and Melby and Beatrice get into a station wagon to go home from Minnesota. All shit breaks loose. And we just meet up with a bunch of people at some truck stop in Denver. Oh. And we share some granola bars and a couple bottles of water and decide our chances are better together. You know what I mean? Like, oh, my God. And then some individual, some single guy just filling the vending machine at the truck stop who happened to be riding along just like puts his entire life on the line three times. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Stanton. It should be the Stanton part. It should be. So far, for sure. Should be the Stanton part. Okay, so they have been trying. And now a little snow. We've gotten a little snow. And Uh-oh. what this early snow is doing is it hurts a little. Yeah. It's cold. It's yeah. uncomfortable. But it's the ringing, the reminder it's giving you in the back of your brain that's really killing you, which is this is the beginning, girl. Yeah, it doesn't get Winter easier. Winter doesn't get easier after this. And by the way, none of these individuals have ever experienced a winter in the mountains. Oh, I didn't even think about that. They've They're seen snow. Just, just east coast. And... Sure. Illinois. Yeah, I mean Illinois gets cold. They've got some cold, but not the elevation. Yeah, not the elevation and not the the depth of snow. You've got a couple feet here and there. You've got some frozen water, but no, they've never seen, they've never seen anything like this. So there's and their whole thing. I mean, 100%. Everyone is like leaning forward because it's just go, go, go. And once you get over a, a range. There's another one. Really and, once, and we just got to get over it. And maybe over the next range. And maybe over the next range. And they're trying. And they're trudging. And it's slow going. And let's not forget how many kids we've got. Let's not forget how many nursing women we've got. Let's not forget how hungry we are. And how that those seven mules and all that, that's great. There's still 81 of us to feed. Okay. How is Wolfinger nursing? <sighs> like, how are they? And Andrew, yeah. yeah. It's tough. It's tough. So as they start to trudge along, they eventually get to a lake. It's called Truckee Lake now. And it's sort of like a grazing area, kind of like a low valley area before this next motherfucking range. There's always another fucking range. And they get down and they, they're kind of, there's um, some really rudimentary cabins okay. on this lake that were built by previous like uh, fur traders. They're made of mud. They've got no windows or anything, but they're shelter of some kind. So, great. So we can put some people in there to hang out while we start to see if we can get over this ridge. Mm -hmm. They were told, and they were told correctly, to expect the snow mid-November. That that's, if you got to get out of here before mid-November, because by then, for sure, the snow will be beyond relief. On October 28th, they get five feet of it's snow. Like, it's like that big Minnesota snowstorm on we, Halloween that listen, one year. Listen, girl, in the 1991. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Stanton, he don't want to die with these people anymore than the next guy, but he also has a second problem, which is he borrowed these mules. Oh. Right? Oh. This Sutter gave him these mules and all these. So he's kind of feeling an obligation. Like, I told these guys I'd bring him his stuff back. So he tries with these two Native American guys, he tries and tries to get over the range yeah. with these mules. And there's been five feet of snow, and he finally is like, fuck. He even says to the Indians, like, look, guys, um, Sutter will kill you if we don't come back with the mules. Oh my gosh. And so the Indians are like, wait, what? <laughs> we, didn't bother. we don't even know these fucking people. <laughs> but they start to work their, uh, you know, we can get, and they mm-hmm. can't, mules can't walk in the fucking snow. That's yeah, not their I mean, deal. It's, it's a wall. So after trying what you have to believe was as hard as you can possibly try, 
Stanton, Lewis, and Salvador, that's the name of these two native guys, get back down to Truckee Lake. They also call it Donner Lake. Um, they get down there, and uh, Stanton's like, okay, I got good news and I got bad news. Okay. The bad news is <laughs> these mules aren't getting over, and none of the animals are, by the way. There's a few ox and a couple of animals left. He's like, there is no creature in our party other than a human being that is going to be capable of getting over these things because of the snow. So tonight, we're going to sleep. In the morning, we're going to slaughter all the animals. Wow. We're going to stack up the meat. We're going to prepare the meat and dry the meat as best we can. We're going to pack up that meat, and we are going to go on foot, all of us, out of here. And I think that with the meat we can pack, and if we can get over this thing before the real like next hard snow comes... We can survive this. And everyone's like, fuck, really? Is that bad? He's like, yeah, that's the deal. That's what we're doing. I mean, he's Gandalf. They have to listen to him. They got to listen to him. Basically. Oh, and they go man. to bed. And they go to bed. And a storm oh, starts that night, oh, Andy. God, no! <laughs> it's November 4th, and a snowstorm starts that night that lasts for eight days. I and didn't... all the animals they were going to slaughter are dead. Yeah, They're gone. Time. I mean, oh. you come out in the morning. Where are the animals? Where are they? If they're not alive, yeah. And if they are alive, if they're any, they just, if they're even accessible, where, what, in the snow? Okay, eighty fucking one people are now fucking hunkered down and snowed in. They've, they're, they've got the place they just came from, which is fucked. They're not going backwards. They have the mountain range ahead of us that was virtually insurmountable before, and now it is covered in snow that. that completely impassable they have left all of their most valuable stuff behind they have no understanding or equipment for snow but a few blankets like they have blankets right were they just and supposed these to sod s- cabins were they supposed to just completely skip the winter like the, yeah, that, the idea that is portion, that you arrive in california by october that and that's just because they took that initial pass yes. like this month mother they were delayed. That first month that they were de- delayed yeah. was like That's, the first, but then they were delayed again yeah, and again. It's just a so domino. Yeah, they're stuck. Oh. Yeah. And, and this storm came early. If the, sto- if the snows had actually come mid-November, maybe they could have crawled over to the worst part before the worst snow. The snow came early, and it's a bad winter. It's a notoriously bad winter. And here's one more thing, Andy, that's going on in the world outside of them. The Mexican-American War starts in April of 1946. Oh, yeah. The month when... that they left, long before shit got bad, but the same month that they left Independence, Missouri, the Mexican-American War started. And among the things this means is that all of the able-bodied yeah. frontiers people, especially the ones who are on the West, they, they's booked, girl. Yeah, yeah. They are busy, yeah, and they don't give a there. fuck. Yeah. So they are snowed in. Now, here is how the 81 people who are snowed in down there are distributed in the area because just like on the trail, they're not all huddled together the whole time. This is where, and sometimes in the various sources, it can get a little confusing. So Truckee Lake is also sometimes called Donner Lake. It's been called Donner Lake since <laughs> this tragedy. It, it wasn't call just it a coincidence that yeah. so they're like, maybe we should stop at Donner Lake. Exactly. And they're like, but we're the Dahmers. Okay. Now, okay. <laughs> stop. Yeah. So there's, there's this like, and that encampment has um, 61 people um are settled in on that part of the lake now see you you said i don't ever look at my notes that's fine this is she's finally looking i'm finally (laughs) looking at my notes okay here we go (laughs) so the lake has um these couple of cabins that i mentioned so there's 60 people who are hunkered in there at the lake that has that like cat that sod like very very rudimentary shelter right those 60 people include 29 kids Oh Almost God. half of the human beings there are children under 15 years old. Seven miles away is the second encampment. And oh, they are wow. at a place, that, it's called Alder Creek, but that is where the Donner family, George Donner and his brother and others have hunkered down. So is that where is, the Reeds are? The rest of the Reed family besides? The Reed family are at the lake. Okay, and they're the at Donners, the lake. Mm-hmm, okay. And the right. Donners are um, at, the, at the Alder Creek. Okay. They have 21 people over there in half of those. 12 are kids. Wow. It, generally speaking, everyone agrees the Donners at Alder Creek had a harder time of it because there was just fewer trees. Like they had to sort of build something quick with like brush and they kind of built a shelter. Whereas this cabin that preexisted was a little bit better. Yeah. 
Louis Kessberg and his wife and his two children have built a lean-to against the side of the cabin. Okay. And that is where they are hunkered down, and everyone's just like, oh, my God. Now, again, the plan was to, to slaughter all of the animals the next morning right. and have some food. We now wake up, no animals. No trees to make, no dry wood to make fire. No, uh, oh, and that's bad. They do eventually get some of the animal meat because they realized that the animals, when they were wandering in the snow, mm -hmm. tended to go next to trees. Oh, okay. So they were so they would go find branches and then just kind of stick, sure, yeah, <laughs> sticks down until they hit an animal yeah. and kind of carve some. And with these hides, they did reinforce their roofs okay. and, and preserved some of the meat. So they've got like some of these meager rations, but girl, it don't take long it's not, Yeah, for everyone to do the math and be like, Ooh, this is the thing that this pit in our stomach that we've had since we left, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> cutoff yeah. is now coming home to roost. This is probably where it falls apart in the midst of this reality. On December 16th, so that huge snowstorm that lasts eight days starts November 4th. On December 16th, they look around and go, Here, okay, here's what we're going to do. Whoever thinks they can make it, the strongest, the ones who seem to be the most resilient, are going to make snowshoes. Because they weren't great, but they were better than nothing. They knew they could get on top of the snow and mm -hmm. get some distance, and they're going to do their best. And there's several reasons why we're going to do this. One, it's our only fucking hope. That yeah. is it. We, we just don't know what else we're going to do. And for the people who were leaving, they were like, I won't eat any more food, which means they'll have more food. Right. So even right. if I think if I think I'm going to die either way, I'd rather die out there yeah. than eat, watching my children starve next to me. This group of people that ultimately decide I'm good, just, just snowshoe I'm going to I'm going to snowshoe out of here. At the time, they referred they were referred to in people's diaries and like the people who were in the encampment as the snowshoe party. We have since recoined them, the forlorn hope. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> now, part of the reason why they're going is because at this point they have already started cutting strips from the roof, the hides that were giving them some water protection, and they soak it until it's like jelly, and then oh. they slurp it. Like that's where we're at. So the Forlorn Hope is originally 17 people. Okay. That is 10 men, 5 women, and 2 boys. One's 10, one's 12. Before they even get close to the range, one of the boys has to turn back. He, didn't, he was the only one who didn't have snowshoes. Well, and what's he even doing I, I there? Know. He's well, not <laughs> even part of the... He doesn't even get the theme. Randall. Oh. And they knew... And they had a hunch it wouldn't work. Eh. But they also thought, there's 16 of us with snowshoes he's walking lighter. in front of him. And he's lighter. And he's lighter. He so he'll walk there. in our tracks. Maybe yeah. it'll be... It's not fine. Okay. So uh. he has to go back. He can't go back alone. So one of the adults goes back with him. Oh, good job. Thanks, bud. So now you've got... The 17 are now 15. Is Stanton with him? Yes. Fucking A right. Uh, so Stanton okay. is with them. Lewis and Salvador, the two native guys, are with them. Okay. And as I said, it's 10 men, five women, which is already really interesting because th when they looked around and said, who's ever strongest and can go, yeah. we are already so starved and so desperate and so outside the boundaries of what anyone has ever experienced before that questions of gender and age and wealth and experience mean literally nothing. Yeah. Many of the individuals who go leave their children behind, including two of the women who are breastfeeding babies. Oh, no. They've dried up. They can't actually yeah. feed them anymore. They are no longer providing food. They are taking food, and they're pretty strong. A breastfeeding mother, yeah. Yeah. your metabolisms kind of kick ass, yeah. right? Like you need a lot to generate the milk, but your body's also like this incredibly efficient machine. And just generally speaking, women's bodies do survive longer in right. these kinds of conditions. Yeah. So there's a, and by no account, no one's diary, no one's letter, no one's historical account gives any hint or whisper of the ladies shan't. That's long, that's, that's <laughs> long gone. <laughs> okay. They leave the, the forlorn hope now numbered in fi 15 of them leave on December 16th, as I said, and they bring with them six days rations they generally presume we have about six days worth of food and by food they mean dried meat 
Okay. Um, I guess they have some coffee left. And there was some like reserve of sugar, probably from Stanton's like original thing. Sure. But obviously they are advocating, let's leave as much food behind as we can. Yeah. But we do kind of want to survive this. So six days is the, as much as we're going to bring. They oh, know that no. they know they're not getting there in six days. This isn't. They know that they they don't know what the fuck. They go out knowing we don't know what the fuck we're going to do after six days. So hard. The book it's is like right when, in front of I me. Know. I could just switch to the end and I know. Ugh. It's like when you move to LA with a hundred dollars. Yeah. And you go, I'll get a job. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. no so I want you to give yourself a little hug. Oh, God, no. This Stanton's going to be okay, though, right? Well, the first day they, the first day they hike all day until they want to puke because they can't stand how far they've gone. And they turn around and they can still see the cabins because oh, they've only gone four fuck. miles. Are you serious? They can still see the cabins. The next day they do five miles. The next day they do four miles. It's fucking slow mother fucking going and it's cold. And they get snow blind oh, because no. it's so fucking yeah. bright. Right. And yeah. so they're having a hard time seeing which way they're going and what direction they're supposed to be heading. And one morning they all wake up and it's like, you know, shake the snow off and sort of drag your bony ass arm up over your try mm. to clear... And Stanton no. is sitting by the fire smoking a pipe. He's been blind for two days, and they had to try to help him walk the day before, and he realized that he was people were slowing down to help him walk because he couldn't see. And he's sitting by the fire smoking a pipe. And Mary Graves, one of the women, says, Are you coming? And he says, Yes, I'll be coming soon. Does he just... And he does not. Oh, man. Stanton dies! Uh... But he dies smoking his pipe. Uh, yeah, Sitting I mean, that's a good, fire. I mean, that, at least that is a, you know. You know, but don't, there is one more reference to Stanton. Keep him in your back pocket. I we hope actually, it's not somebody who was like, he tasted we actually, great. We actually hear from him again in a minute. Nobody okay. eats, I'll, I'll spoil alert, nobody eats Stanton. Okay, good. Stanton Thank is goodness. undevoured. Okay, great. Um, but oh, the rest Stanton. of them are starting to slowly starve to death. The process of starvation from feeling starved to dying mm -hmm. takes give or take five to six days. You know, you can live like three days without water, but you can live five or six days without, right. without food. Yeah. The first one to three days are just agony, pain, pain in your stomach, pain in your body because you're starting to feel desperate. The next day or two are apparently apathy oh. and a real kind of calm resignation. By day five-ish... Is this where the party people comes in? Start people start like, get, yeah! And people oh, are like, I love you, man. Um, the delirium. Oh, no. Madness and babbling and just kind of running and then falling and not being clear. And when the individual has gotten delirious, there's no going back. You can't actually feed them and save them at that point. And then eventually they just lay down and stop breathing. <laughs> right around this time. It's been a few days. People are starting to get a little fucking crazy. And it's, they've, been, <laughs> they've been stuck and slow going. Is the first time someone suggests, and none of the diaries and none of the letters say who it was. Maybe it just occurred to them all at the same time. If one of us were to die, the others could live. That's how it's presented at first. Wow. If one of us were to die, perhaps it could save us. And then they decide, yeah, that's right. And the best way to do this is to draw lots. What? And decide wow. who's going to die. Wow. So they draw lots. And this is while they're in that delirium state. Well, or some are further along than others. You know, some okay. of the women are actually pretty clear and yeah. some of the men are okay, but they can see evidence. Mm -hmm. that we've got a day or so left mm -hmm. and there's nothing to eat. So they all agree and they all agree to draw lots. I don't know. It's not clear if all the women and all the children, if everybody drew lots or if they just sort of went from like the men, will I don't know. And the person Cause who they've been doing a great job just really equal. leading this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's hear it for equality. Yeah, you know? really. Um, and the guy who draws the long straw is a guy named Patrick Dolan. And he has no family in the thing. He's one of those lone guys who was just hoping to start a life. He's off the boat Irish. Everybody really liked him. He was a really nice guy. Oh, yeah. And um, and they draw his lot, and he's like, okay. Wow. All right. 
but no one can kill him. They oh, can't stand oh, him. Oh, because he's just really nice. He's like, the, it'll be lucky for you. Just right, come over here and Right, run. I don't mind. It'll be fine. I mean, at least he seemed... He just didn't have a little nibble. It's right, fine. Just, right, just, just, start, I taste just great. Come start, on. The, start with my lucky ring. Come on over. Um, no one can do it. Oh. So they all agree. Oh, this is And this is what one of really the journals... Sad. Here's what I mean, one of the journals says. Is they're all huddled by the fire. They agree to do this. They draw lots. It's Patrick. And that as soon as they realize who it was simultaneously they all just stand up and keep walking wow because they They're can't bad they can't do people it. yeah were because they like they i wish it, it was jim and then okay. they just go after i know right okay now oh, listen no. to this listen oh, to what no. okay you're in the forlorn hope oh god no you're 14 now stanton is dead but the 14 are still there See, things was, are going good, but we know a few are starting to trickle off. We know a few of them aren't going to, they're not doing great. They've already decided we are gonna. We could eat each other and live. And they're, that night, they're, they build their fire, which is amazing. They can still get a fire together. And they're huddling around, like, fire's asleep. What the fuck are we going to do with this? And all of a sudden, the fire poof, is gone. Oh, no. Some, oh. They built their fire on an ice shelf that was over a river. Oh, God. And when the Melted wood. Melted a hole in it. <laughs> And when the fire got hot enough, it just fell into the water and disappeared. It just poof, it's this, gone. This is the saddest farce. <laughs> so now so now they're like, oh, I thought we were going to starve to death. Turns out we're going to freeze to death instead. But instead of freezing to death, one of the guys, don't know who, uh, who has some frontier experience <laughs> and the wherewithal. I mean, I feel honest to God, if he, I haven't had lunch by two. Fish? No. Oh, you know what God. these fucking morons yeah. I'll How get are they to not hunting the or fishing? Nobody's fish. What's going on? They hunted a little. I'll talk to you about my Did biggest they... question for CF Mc... McGlashan. Yeah, They're on a lake. Right. That's but the... there's eight, you know, there's 10 feet of snow and it's frozen water and you're starving. You can't, I mean. We're from Minnesota. We ice fish. I mean, but I guess, I guess before <laughs> they... I eat a guy, I'd try fishing. Anyway. Yeah. But they're, but these guys, these guys, they got nothing. I mean, it, you know what I mean? But yeah. So the fire's out and it's like, we're going to freeze to death. So this dude's like, nah, here's what we're going to do. Crazy. I, I cannot applaud this. Stuff. He lays out one blanket down on the snow, mm -hmm. and he gets everybody into a series of spoons. Oh, yeah. Big spoon, little spoon. So you're all hugging. One big blanket over the top. Yeah. And they fell asleep. And then every once in a while, they'd sort of knock the snow off so they wouldn't suffocate. Yeah. And for better or worse, they all wake up in the morning. That's a good idea. It's a great idea. Yeah. Especially if you like one of the other ones. I know. You're like, like, hot. I know. I'm like, hot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I want to be next to Abigail. <laughs> I know. It's like, I know you can't spare the blood flow, but like, <laughs> if it were to slip in me, no big deal. <laughs> when they wake up, our buddy Patrick Dolan, oh. he want, he's babbling. He's in the delirium oh, phase no. and he dies that day. Um, two other guys die uh, later because you still don't. Yeah, I mean, they're you're just, solving they're problems, but death. you're starving. Um, and it is at this point that, the, according to McGadgen, some of the men, they, what does he say, uh, summoned the courage. Oh. Again, this is how you know that he approached the subject with such empathy. Yeah. Some of the men gathered the courage to, quote, approach the dead. Because here's the thing, you can't judge them. I mean, it's like, I, I, I mean, I can say for me, I've never started to starve to death around people who were dead. No. I don't know what would happen. No, I do know that I have never, I've been hungry enough to think about stealing food. Yeah, totally. Totally. But that's as far as, that's you know. That's because we're actors. Totally. I'm an <laughs> well, artist. Yeah. I've been hungry enough to consider dog food. Those people Absolutely. eat it in the grocery store. Yeah. But no. I yeah. can't. I can't judge it's, these people, and and God bless him, he doesn't either. And also, it's it's a testament because when this book came out, it sold out in two weeks. Wow! Everyone was desperate to quote unquote yeah. devour this history. <laughs> so let's keep a track of our numbers, okay. though. So we know eighty one right were hunkered down in at the lake. Right. Fifteen have left. Yep. Okay, so that left sixty five ish. Right, and the Donner Party still has that. So they, and there's and that's included. So that 81 includes oh, okay. 61 at okay. the lake and 20 at that separate seven miles away camp. Okay. So yeah, totally. So in that's that valley. one big in the valley. Yeah, okay. In the valley, yeah. And you've got these 15, 14, 13, 12. You know, sure. Yeah, there's 12 of them. So they're they're trading back and forth between those two, between the Donner they, camp. To an extent, the, yeah, yeah. The the folks, uh, yeah, the 61 and the 20, they're in communication. Sure. And every once in a while, they'll travel back and forth right, if they need right, to, right. but they know nobody's got shit. Yeah. You know, but yeah, they know where each other are. There's a some path in the snow. One day, somebody walked in. Are you still fucked? Okay. Yeah, we're, yep, yeah, we're, we're fucked too. over here, yeah, too. Yeah, we're All fucked. right, that's great. It is at this point that the cannibalism hmm. begins. 
what they do, the forlorn hope is the first to experience it. And what they do is they make sure that no one um, prepares or devours a member of their family. Oh my God. Because there's really, a lot of yeah. husbands and wives and sisters and brothers in within this forlorn hope party. Um, I told you that there were two boys and one of them goes back right away. Right. The other boy who stayed dies of starvation oh. in his sister's arms. Oh God. She does not eat him. Yeah, I mean But that... she sees oh. his heart. Oh my God. Stuck through and roasted. I mean, there's only so much you can God. avoid here. So that means that somebody from this party survives if they know what happened up there. Oh, yes. Oh, oh isn't it fascinating? Aren't oh, you just, aren't you just intrigued? Mm. So they stumble along for the next several days and weeks, nearly starving to death. Someone drops dead. They eat sufficiently mm -hmm. to stumble ahead a few days until they start to starve again. Someone dies they devour that person sufficient to get enough strength and they're just losing people kind of in relation to How surviving much? the other two right once they start eating the first human lewis and salvador are like so long yeah the two native okay. guys they're yeah. like mm -mm. now they are just as fucked by the yeah. way they have because they are Native Americans and they are from this area, the theory is that they know how to survive here, which yeah. maybe they do, but not here, not with this. They are also starving. Not is well, the point. people are also perhaps going to eat them. Correct. So they fuck off and they just and they just go. They're like they no thanks and I, disappear. I get that logic. I get that too. Yeah. But eventually, the surviving members of the Forlorn Hope come upon them. Oh God nearly dead oh, no. also starving and weak and too weak to to move and they are shot and devoured oh that's awful so they're they are the so, only ones that are murdered so now they're eaten. everyone else who's eaten a court it's certainly in the forlorn hope died naturally because the yeah. one person they said let's kill a guy and the guy was like great kill me they couldn't do it right but the two indian guys they kill but is this the now, survivors that are saying these things like it's yes them. okay yes so, yeah, so. but C.F. McGlashan, right? Was he one of the survivors? No, yeah. He's like, this will make a great book. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's like, yeah. They, but there's no police. He could have said they found yeah, him dead. Totally. And they say we shot him. Yeah. So they yep, say we shot that's these true. two guys, you know. But then it gets nuts, sir. Right? Um, what? So they get, so they start to get at, there's two men still alive, Foster and Eddie, this? and all five women. Okay, so, yeah. So there's two men and all five women are still alive. Wow. They get to a Native American village. And they're like, oh. And the first things the Native Americans do is fucking run because these are creepy ass, skeletal, glaze eyed ghosts yeah. coming out of the woods. Oh, God, that'd be horrifying. But then they kind of creep out and are like, no, they're humans and they're whatever. And they give them grain and nuts and grass. I mean, they don't have a ton, but they yeah. give them enough to kind of keep them. The two men, Eddie and Foster, continue on, get to Sutter's Fort. And are like, we're in the woods a little ways. There's a couple left. And they go back and get the remaining five people. So of our forlorn hope. Wow. That set out on December 16th, seven survive. Did the sister of the boy yes. survive? She did? She did. Okay. All women. All of the females survived. All of the females. Oh, mm -hmm. all of them. I didn't know. So there had been 10 men. Right. Okay. Uh, eight of the men died. There we go. Okay. That's okay. Got, That's yeah. exactly why I write this down. Yeah. So eight of the men died. One yeah. of the boys died. Yeah. And all five and women all five survived. Women. That's crazy that all of them. That's wow. Okay. Now these fucks have a story to tell when they get to Sutter's Fort, right? And Eddie and Foster are like, girl, we got to get back yeah. because that we've left our babies yeah. We left our children and two of them to get Foster and Eddie in particular were like had these young children, like three year old boys. Yeah. And there was an old lady at Donner Lake, Mrs. Murphy. She's like this sweet old lady. And she said to them, do not worry about your children. I will do everything in my power. She's her children are older. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's like, I will do everything in my power to protect your children and keep your children alive. You know, I'm going to do my best. So she's got oh. the Foster and Eddie children. But they have all the more reason to be like, we got to go back. Yeah. Like, that was the whole point, is Absolutely. that we will be right back. 
and they start hitting up all of the folks who have come over on this Oregon Trail. And it's not hard to get the empathy of people because they, if anyone's going to understand how fucking hard, yeah, it, it, it like you know, you just think, oh my god, what if we didn't get out before the snow came? <gasps> oh my god, if our wagon got stuck, oh that would be. And they raise some money, and they get some supplies together. Foster needs to recover. He's not in great shape yet. Right. Eddie, he's in just enough shape. That he gets this guy, Captain Tucker. Also a great story. Captain Tucker has a dream. He's heard about this. What? He's heard about the the people who are fucking stuck in the Sierra Nevadas. And he's like imagining how bad it is. He has such a horrible dream about them one night that he wakes up and is like, I have to go. What? I have to go do what I can. What? So he finds Eddie and is like, I'm your guy. I'm yeah. Captain Tucker girl. I'm getting in there. I'm going to do my best. And Eddie's like, great. So Eddie starts to go with them. He gets like a certain amount and is like, I don't know. i be able to go back. I'm going to tell you where to go. You go up there, you go over the thing, and here's what you'll find. Here's how you'll get to them. Captain Tucker takes four or five guys and some supplies, and they're <laughs> right heading over the thing, and they find Stanton. They start to think, we're fucked. We are in hor- We are so lost. This uh-huh. can't possibly be the way. No one's been oh, telling. And right helped at- even after he exactly. was dead. Right about the time that they're like, we can't keep going. I- we have no way of knowing we're in the right place. They find Stanton's body, and C.F. McClashen says exactly what you just did. Oh, man. Even after death, he, he assisted in, oh. <laughs> in helping the people. I'm I glad know. it was that way, because when you... Because, you know, you said he didn't survive, and then you got into the starvation. You're like, by day six, they're kind of going crazy. I thought you were going to be like, and then Stanton comes over the hill again, just stark <laughs> raving mad, and just starts eating people. And I was like, no. I don't want him to go out Please that don't way. make him be bad. Please, I don't want him to I turn know, it's that like way. When, it's like when your favorite person gets bitten by a zombie and exactly walking Exactly like, like that. It's you're exactly. like, please, just shoot him in the <laughs> just brain. Just him. Somebody just kill him. Um, I hope you're hungry, because we're just going to take a short break. I'm going to give you some beef jerky. <laughs> so hungry. Order some barbecue. Order some barbecue. And we'll be right back. Hey, it's Christine Blackburn from Story Worthy. Every Tuesday, listen to a brand new Story Worthy with fantastic comedians like Avi Lieberman, Bruce Baum, Steph Tolov, Dawn Brody, Ed Krasnick, and Angela Johnson Reyes. Plus, you'll hear true stories from other fantastic people like author Marion Keys, author Haley McGee, How about hearing a true story from the one and only Peter Brady, Christopher Knight? Well, that's the kind of entertainment you're going to hear over on Story Worthy. So check out Story Worthy, brand new every Tuesday. And one more thing, make it a Story Worthy week. All right, friends, we are about to rejoin the first relief party as they begin to descend down into Donner Lake. But before we do, please give Hilf some relief by leaving us a rating and a review wherever you listen. We love it. And it really lubricates our algorithm. Mm. And of course, while you're there, don't forget to follow me, follow me, follow me. These guys have no idea what to expect. The forlorn hope has has been like it's not a, it's worse than you think, but they don't they have no idea what to expect. They start to come <laughs> over the the ridge down into the lake area, mm-hmm. and they see some smoke coming out of the roof. And this woman climbs out of the snow and sees them and says, "Are you real or are you angels?" And she's like, oh, "Right." No. A little delirious, and they're like, we're here to rescue you guys. Now, I want you to just know oh, there is God. no sign of cannibalism at the valley at this point. There's 65-ish people remaining in the valley after the Forlorn Hope has left. Right. 13 people have died of starvation oh, since okay. they left, leaving, give or take, 30 people still alive. Okay. They do not see any... And nobody reports that they have started cannibalizing each other yet. They're still apparently eating the walls and, like, grass. Sure. You know what I mean? And what little stuff they can find. Some people are storing and hiding and rationing little things. You know, they're doing okay. Mrs. Murphy is, quote, unquote, mentally unwell because she has absolutely been taking care of these kids and Uh probably not eating at all herself. Uh So she's got – so in the the one sod cabin – is Louis Kessberg. Oh. With his wife and his daughter, 
Mrs. Murphy with her eight-year-old son, Simon, and the two little boys that she's been looking after. Right. Down the road at Alder Creek, you've got the Breens and the Donners. George Donner cut his hand a while back trying to fix a wagon. And he's been pretty much on death's door with this gangrenous infection for weeks. And his very loyal wife, Tamson Donner, has just been by his bedside. She's got five daughters, a 12-year-old, a 14-year-old, and three little ones under the age of six. They're all, they're all in this thing just hanging in there, okay? So the first relief party comes over the thing, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is bad. And this is who they take out with them, okay? They take 21 people out. Wow. Six adults, nine kids between the ages of 10 and 14, six kids under 10. Wow. One of the people that goes out with them is uh, Miss Wolfinger, oh, the, the okay. 20 year old. Yeah. She's, okay. she's like, I don't she's know what like, the I... fuck. I still don't know what the fuck, but I'm getting out of here. And the key, this is February. They get there on February 4th. And you and I both know that from is horrible time. It's still really cold. <laughs> you know, like technically yeah. in terms of like where the solstice lands, yeah, this is, but it is still, t- it's deep in winter yeah. on February 4th. And uh, they're like, okay, let's go. So they head out. Now, they have cached food and supplies, this relief party, at various places along the way. The idea being, when we start heading back, we'll yeah. be able to uncover this food. Yeah. Their first three caches are gone. What? Devoured by animals. God. So they can't get to them. And it only takes a few days into this relief party heading back to Sutter's Fort that, oh my fucking God, we're going to die. One grown man dies. One three-year-old child starves and dies. And as they're trudging through the snow, not knowing what the fuck is going on, here comes a guy. Is it Reed? It's Reed. <laughs> it's Reed! Andy James And he James comes and he just Reed. starts stabbing them and saying, I'm so I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. so sorry. I don't... But do you know who he sees? It's his wife. His wife. Oh, that's amazing. Why is this called the Donner Party? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's, I couldn't agree. It's the it's Reed Party. Ridiculous. If this fucking thing is anything, this is the Reed Party. And it's- that's the party you want to go to. And we have James Reed's diary. Wow. Where he says, I found my wife. I mean, she has to think it's a mirage. Yeah. He's got two of his kids are there. He's got three of his little ones are still back because she couldn't bring them okay, all. The two little ones back. But part of what she said, they had started out actually with some of the little ones, and uh-huh. the little ones couldn't make it. Yeah. And one of the guys is like, "They're not. I'll take them back. I'll go back and I'll take them back with me." And she's like, "No." At first, she's like, "Absolutely not. I can't be separated right. from my children." Then she remembers that this guy is a mason. And James uh-huh. Reed is a Mason, and she, her husband. And she knows, like, Masons are these, you know, their mm-hmm. word is their bond kind of thing. And she makes him swear before he leaves, like, on his name as a Mason, that he will take her children back and he will watch out for them. But, you know, and he's like, yeah. And she's like, okay, then go. So Reed reconnects with his wife, holy fuck, Let's and his back. daughter, holy fuck, they have an... And more than that, he has stuff to sa- literally save this relief party. Wow. So they call his... This is called the second relief in the history books. And the second relief meets the first relief in the middle of their way back and actually saves the first relief party because all of their cachets got devoured. So he's able to give them the provisions they need. They probably kiss, hold each other's <laughs> faces, do a lot of like, holy fuck. Mm-hmm. And then Reed is like, see at Sutter's just, Fort because I've obviously got to keep going. Wow. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, God. This is just... It's this a is lot. gripping and horrible and... Oh, God. So it was the day that captain tucker leaves the lake with the right so he gets the 21 people together this is the first relief party here we go okay is the same day that reed left sutter's oh wow so did they they yeah and that's crazy right that they meet in the middle but what this means for the folks who are left in the valley is that it's been about a month since that first relief party has left and they knew that there may be another relief party coming, and hopefully now we know how to get to you, but they don't have any idea, tick tock, tick tock. The second relief party is led by Reed, and he's also got some, you know, other, other guys with him. Um, and when they get down to oh, the God. cabins, the evidence of the cannibalism is immediately apparent. Oh, God. So 
they, the first thing they see is a 16-year-old boy named Jean-Baptiste Trudeau carrying a human leg. Oh, my God. And when he sees them, he f- stops, throws the leg. <laughs> <laughs> Just comically to the side. He's like, Hi, everyone. <laughs> kind of like when I was caught smoking. <laughs> Whoops, I was uh, just throwing this in the pile. Of, <gasps> oh, oh, voila. Le <laughs> jambon. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, so he just throws it into a pit that contains the rest of Jacob Donner. That is George wow. Donner's brother. Wow. And they're like, Whew. All right, right. The relief party is not completely shocked by this. The forlorn hope has intimated that things are pretty bad and that we've eaten each other and things down there can't be that much better. But it is bodies and pieces of bodies are on top of the snow and there is evidence of the devouring and the the dismembering is immediately So this doesn't seem like it's as um, thoughtful as the forlorn hope. That's true, but no less desperate. And one other individual who has come back with Reed in this second relief party, McClutchen. Oh. The guy that you thought yeah. wasn't going to come back at all. I mean. He went out with Stanton. Takes off his new wedding ring, puts uh, on his uh, old uh, wedding uh, ring, and then just is like, yeah. all right, let's see. He's like, you know, these kids drop like flies. It's really not a bad idea to diversify your happens. portfolio. Yeah. So McClutchen's back, and okay. he's, a, he's a bit shocked. Now, they are, they're not judging, <laughs> okay? They're just, we're just, we're saving as many lives as possible mm-hmm. here. We're just trying to get everybody out. So the second relief party led by James Reed and including Mr. McClutchen, among other people, People that they convinced, God bless them, to not be in the Mexican-American War, but to come and help us right. save these assholes out in the snow. Um, they bring 17 people out. 17 tasty people. Te- okay. 17 little morsels come out, and okay. it is only three adults, what? two teenagers, and 12 children between the ages of nine and one. Okay. Now, here's a guy. You want another hero? We're looking for some good guys, right? Sure. Yes, please. His name is John Stark. John Stark doesn't know these fucking guys, but we know Stark's a good guy. Yeah. It's a good name. Yeah. Okay. John Stark, you know, Reed and whoever else was like, they're fucked. And he's like, I can probably help. Let's do this. Yeah. Not only does John Stark get all the way in there and see the evidence of cannibalism, the desperation that these people are going through. And these these kids, how many did I say there were? Nine? Mm -hmm. Too uh, many? Too Way many. more than I thought there were. Twelve children between the ages of nine and one. These kids aren't in good shape. They're weak. Right. John Stark carries these children in March, still a lot of fucking snow, all the way to Sutter's Fort. Wow. And here's how he does it. They and this all is got again, out. and this is again according to all of the journal entries and all of the diaries. Yeah, these guys survive because they're wow. a little better at it. They got right. caches of food. Right. He would I'm in my imagination, he's yeah. got three under each arm and one on his back. Right. And he'd go up. Just leave them and leave go them back and down. Go and go back get the down. Rest. So, however many miles were under the feet of every other rescuer, this guy, John Stark, carried children and did it at least two or three times. The author of the Donner Party history has a whole thing about there is no nobler man in history than the person of John Stark. Oh, and the wow. kids, too. The kids all remember him as literally yeah. Their savior. an angel. Yeah, yeah. He's and, this the guy guy and for no reason. Why? Nobody's, Nobody paying, can... nobody's paying him. It's, it's, you know, you're, and yeah, did, did you ever yeah. hear of him before? No. No, I mean, you yeah. know, yeah, no. Nobody can see us, but I'm wrapped up in a ball right now. He, he's know? got his knees. <laughs> Just like listening. I'm knees. like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the second relief party leaves and one of the things that they noticed just like the first relief party did is that tamson donner george donner's wife is in pretty good health and she's doing okay she's well, not it's not like she's eating well food. fed <laughs> well they had more money i mean they may be more well supplied nobody's mm-hmm. like eating great but sure. she has not devoured human flesh yet okay neither have her three children and george is still hanging on by a thread but like he's, he's not walking out really? of here and okay. he's a he's in his 60s like well, i don't know what we think is going on here but boy she is right by his side i feel like i know the least about the donners <laughs> in this whole but, situation i know no it's true you it's, get to finish the whole book it's exact it's, it's that crazy. It, it really isn't as as much about them so here's who's left after this second relief party with okay. John Stark carrying all the children, so long, everybody. Here's who's left now. Okay. Louis Kessberg. Okay. 
Mrs. Murphy, God bless her. Wow. And she has her son, Simon, and she's still got the two Foster and Eddie boys because they're so little. Right. Mr. and Mrs. Donner, he's still hanging on, and she's got three of her youngest daughters. Two, I think, of her older daughters actually went with one of the earlier parties. She's got their three, four, and six. So her littlest girls are still with her. Okay? And the second relief party... That's it? That's who's left? That's who's left. Wow. Between surviving and leaving, that's who's left. That's 10. Yeah. And then we've got some of the relief party that came over with Reed. There's these three guys. Stay. It's Clark, Caddy, and Stone. The idea is, you guys have a lot more body strength. Right. So you can chop wood and you can like help out here. Can they And hunt? you can do something, right? Maybe you could get a fucking fish hook. Fish I don't know why we aren't fishing. Um, you know, you can do yeah. something. And so these three guys are like, yeah, for sure, we'll stay. And the second relief party takes off. And then Caddy and Stone are like, this is awful. Oh. A, there's fucking skin eaters. These are skin eaters. And it's scary, and we're gonna die. Yeah. So Caddy and Stone, pretty early on, are like, you know what? I know we said we were gonna stay. We're actually not gonna stay. We're gonna go. And Mrs. Donner says, "Okay, will you please take my three girls with you? Because mm. I'm starting to think I'm, I'm taking. Everyone's taking a good look at the situation here. Mm-hmm. So she says, "I understand you're gonna leave. Take my three, four, and six year old, please." They say, "You got it." They take these three girls, they start to head up, and they're going to stop at the other house, the, the Truckee Lake, mm-hmm. where Lewis Kessberg and Mrs. Murphy and Simon and the Eddie and Foster boys are, and tell them we're leaving. And they leave the three girls oh, there. God, I knew it. I knew it. Those, ah, I knew it. They drop off the three girls seven miles away from their mama, God. and they fuck off up the mountain. Now, you and I are mad. C.F. McLashen, even with these guys, he's like, what are you going to do? What are they going to do? So they she couldn't think, do it. So she thinks they're... She thinks they're on their way to safety. Oh. So they fuck off up into the mountains to save themselves. So Murphy's never going In the to meantime... Go. I know, and Murphy's, Murphy's like, this not, is great. She's like, I'll just... I'll take them. This I'll is great. Take yeah. them on. I, just, I want more. That's yeah. fine. Um, in the meantime, there's the, the one other guy, Clark, mm-hmm. who's the other... You know, mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. oh, I thought we yeah. were going to chop wood for yeah. these people. Is that not <laughs> what we're doing? He looks and and Trudeau, Mr. Leg Muncher, uh-huh. who's sixteen yeah. and feeling pretty strong all of a sudden, him and Clark are like, We're gonna go too. What? We're feeling like we could probably get over the cliff too. And again, everyone's like, Save yourselves, fuck, there's no reason yeah. to stay here, yeah. go, right? So they're like, Yeah, so they say to Tamson Donner too, we're gonna go. And she's like, All right. They stop at Donner Lake and see a scene of horror. Oh god. Which is saying a lot. I want you to think of everything that you've heard of and seen to this point to think about what two guys who already decided they were going to fuck off just walked seven-ish miles, see Kessberg's cabin, something so horrible that they walk seven miles back to Mrs. Donner just to tell her, you got to go get your girls right now. Why didn't they right just give them? That was my big question. Just two dudes are like, hey. They don't care. They don't take the girls out of there. And there's a chance it's because they're afraid of Lewis Kessberg. Oh, God. I'll get there in a minute. You know, I think he ate Wolfinger. I think he just started you to do? snack on him early. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're not alone. You're not alone. It's easy to think bad of Kessberg. Oh, and it gets worse, girl. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. So, um... They go, anyway, bye, and they leave. And Mrs. Donner now has with her. gangrened, dying husband. Oh, my God, my three daughters. I was, like, comfortable just thinking they might starve to death in the snow. But now all I know is that they're in, quote, unquote, a fate worse than starvation. That's what they told her her three daughters were going through. And they leave. Okay. As they are leaving, who should come down the mountain but the third relief party oh, wow the third relief party includes foster and eddie oh wow these two the forlorn hope guys yeah right wow, the forlorn that. hope guys who ate uh, dead people yeah. themselves yeah. who fucking skin of their teeth got out have they now might feel wrapped bad. it up they're yeah, feeling they have a bit of guilt they come over the cliff and they see caddy and stone and clark and they go come here for a second you guys before you go down there um you should know something it's worse than you could ever imagine. It's bad, bad, bad. Foster and Eddie haul ass. 
down into the, they say you fucking wait here by the way yeah we're all gonna, gonna go say. out together yeah. right <laughs> and we'll be right back so the third relief party gets down there and this is two weeks ish later okay so from the time that they had left mrs Mm -hmm. donner and all the people it's been about two weeks okay they get down (laughs) oh gosh to donner lake and they get to kessberg's cabin and mrs murphy is there and simon and the three girls and kessberg but their two sons are not. And they were both three years old. Oh my God. And they ask Mr. Kessberg, Mrs. Murphy, where are our boys? And Kessberg says, I ate them. Oh, God. Now, there are a lot of versions of what happened. Just... But one of the girls, Eliza Donner, who was six, and according to, you know, I told you at the beginning that he made a point of, of dispelling misinformation. Yeah. And he made a point of uh, saying that the truth is sufficiently terrible, that we should, be, we should all be satiated by how bad it really was. And when he describes what Eliza Donner describes to him, he says, this is the most palatable version that has ever been put in print. And what she said was that Kessberg took the boys one at a time on different nights, to bed with him and ate them oh my God. in bed. Then, what? in the morning, on one of the days, Mrs. Murphy took the remains of one of the boys from him and he took it back from her and nailed it to the wall. What? And the, the girls fuck? spent much of their time huddled watching and hearing him pace and terrified that he would be coming to get one of them next. This, I would suspect, was the scenario that our friend Caddy and Stone had seen when they were like, Mrs. Donner, darling, you're going to want to go get your girls. What the fuck? Foster says... This is all fun. This is all fun and everything. You were so excited. And now I'm just... So. I thought this was just going to end with them. Just uh, This was going to be like mm. the history of the George Foreman grill or something. Well, and, uh, in a manner of speaking. Is, uh. So Foster <laughs> says, and Foster uh-huh. and Eddie, I mean, it's such a bind because it's yeah. their fucking yeah. kids, but they also have been in this yeah. position. Oh. Foster says to Kessberg, if I ever see you in California, I'm going to kill you. Now let's get now let's get on with the relief. Let's finish this saving. Like I'm gonna save your fucking asses. Wow. And if I ever see you again, I'm gonna kill you. But this is not we're not in kill you place. We're in save you place. Which is kind of very big of him. I don't know if I would be in the same position. And also, you know, the (laughs) Foster and Eddie are like, come on, girls, (laughs) right? Yeah. And they get Simon and they get three girls. Right. And they've still got old leg chumper Trudeau right. halfway up the hill, who's did, technically a kid. He's 16. Did Mrs. Murphy try to take the kid because she wanted to eat it, or was she trying to take it mm. away because she was like, you're a no, monster? No, I think, I don't know. I think according, the, from what is written, it mm-hmm. sounds like what she wanted to do was sort of take like it like. Bury him? De- it depends on, <laughs> or, it depends on how your imagination sees what happened. Because yeah. the question is, the question that has been permeating is, mm-hmm. did Kessberg murder a living child in Shh. order to eat it? Did Kessberg begin to eat the child before Mrs. Murphy? Like, did she just find the child was dead, started to take the child, and he took it back to be like, no, it's dead, I'm going to eat it. Oh. It's not, whatever okay, the scenario yeah. is, it's not great. And Mrs. Murphy has been described for months now as yeah. mentally un stable right 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 who knows by the way thank you again for uh hosting this christmas themed podcast isn't it beautiful (laughs) this holiday edition isn't it fantastic yeah oh you're welcome yeah yeah family first they're like this is awful we gotta go right i mean that's kind of right we're gonna we'll fucking sort this out later so the this um third relief party foster and eddie take all the kids eight-year-old simon the three four or six year old and they're about to go and they see mrs donner oh and they're okay. just about to fucking leap like literally we've got this going and mrs donner because i gotta get my girls i mean she heard uh-huh. 
she's got this dying husband and she's heard this horror, whatever is not specific, but this horrible thing. So she is sort of stumbling and like snow blind and she's coming over to the cabin and the relief party is like, oh girl, good timing. Come on. Mm -hmm. And she says, I can't, my husband's still alive. And they're like, ma'am, your three daughters are here. You, we think have enough strength at this point, especially with what we've got with us to survive this. It's seven miles. You've just come seven miles over the snow. You're going to go seven miles back, and you don't know if he's alive. Like, what if you get there and he's dead? You know? Yeah. Then what oh. have you done? And she says, can you wait? I'll, you're right. I didn't know you guys were going to be here, to be fair. Yeah. I thought I was just coming to get my kids, you yeah. know? And so she says, can you actually, I cannot leave if I think he might still be alive. So can you guys wait? This bitch is thinking she's going to go seven miles back to look and see if her husband's dead and then come another seven. I don't know. She says, can you wait? And they they go, and they look up at the mountains and they see a storm is starting to gather. And we've learned very few lessons as well as we've learned, don't fucking wait around for a storm. You got to get the head of the storm, right? And they say, no, ma'am, if we wait one more hour, we'll die. So you're coming now or you're not coming at all. And she kisses her children goodbye. She turns her ass around and goes seven miles back to her maybe dead, maybe not dead. Wow. Husband. Can you believe that shit? By the way, we talked about how far people went. Now, granted, they're going up in snowshoes. They went four miles in a whole day. And she just did 14 miles. That's nuts. Right? By herself. So she says, and they're also kind of like, you know, also, we'll probably be back. I mean, we're the third relief party. Yeah. People are going to keep coming. She goes back to her husband, and they go up. Now, they all survive. Okay. All, all wow. these three kids, Simon, they survive. But who wow. we have left is Louis Kessberg and crazy blind Mrs. Murphy. Oh, they're just the they're two. They're in that... one. Oh, and so they Tamsin left them Donner. there. So they're they, there. Because they, 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 they were both too weak to get out. But they could wander over to the. And Mrs. Donner and George Donner, and seven miles away, there's four people left when they leave on March of 1847. (gasps) When they decide to finally go back for one last, how's everyone doing? Yeah. It is April. Wow. Of 1847. It has been a full year since these decked out wow. double decker, all the ox in the world, and your diamond jewelry rag and train left Independence, Missouri. It has been a full year. And they're pretty sure at this point this is a this is a salvage party. Right. Because again, there's wealth. More than one individual and more than one family is like, I buried all my money. Yeah. In my cabin, in the snow, the jewels, the tools, the things that are of significant value that can change my children's life as they establish themselves. It's worth going back for this stuff, right? And they're thinking we're going to get these valuables. Mm-hmm. When they oh, oh God, get... <laughs> you keep smiling. <laughs> she keeps smiling and I'm just like hugging my knees. <laughs> this is just... So they get over the ridge... And there's a to bed the and breakfast. <laughs> uh, no. They, they get over the ridge, and there's bodies and body parts all over the place. It's the first thing they see. What? Mrs. Murphy uh, is dismembered, oh and there's God. a saw laying next to her severed pieces. Oh, my God. Um, Kessberg is nowhere to be seen. But there, oh, and Mrs. Donner's body is deceased and in his cabin as well. I've tried to find whether or not she had been devoured yet, and it's not clear. Okay. She's not on the top of the snow dismembered like old Lady Murphy, but she did. And she's in Kessberg's cabin. Right, so he, And there's a fresh set of tracks going from his cabin to to the Alder Creek, yeah, to where they were staying. And they're like, good. And all of a sudden, here comes Kessberg walking into the camp. And they jump him. And one of the guys in this last relief is Foster. Foster, who fucking said, you told me you ate my kid. Yeah. (laughs) And and he, Kessberg, is a cannibalistic, murderous thief Mm -hmm. in his mind. They grab Kessberg. They string him up by 
uh, they're going to hang him, a noose. And they say, where is the Donner's money? Because they also went to the Donner cabin and uh -huh. saw that the money that, that they were told, the kids had kind of intimated this is where it was. And the money's gone, and he won't tell you. Something. Finally, he says, fine, fine, I have their money. But it was Mrs. Donner's dying wish for me to go and get it and make sure her kids survive. And they're like, you killed her. And he's like, why would I kill someone? There's bodies everywhere. Am I going to deny I've been eating people? No, you fucking ate people too. I've been eating the dead. Why would I kill someone when I have plenty of dead people to eat? And why would I walk seven miles for money? Mm. Like I'm going to, you know, he's trying to tell them like, you yeah. are not thinking clearly <laughs> Here. They are like, yeah, and they, you and yeah. I both very yeah. easily painted Kessberg as a real bad guy, and he's yeah. a baby eater. We've already been told yeah. about this baby eating situation. Yeah. He's very, and um, Wolfinger, whatever fucking happened with Wolfinger, yeah. and he put hard coop out of his yeah. wagon. Kessberg has a lot of bad story. He's a bad fucking guy, and he's easy to hate, and he's the reason. He's the one. He's the villain. His name becomes synonymous with the worst mm -hmm. part of this whole thing. And they start to drag him over the thing to see justice mm -hmm. at Sutter's Fort. Now, here's the final count. Oh. 87 people went Wait. on that Hastings cutoff. Okay. 42 of them died. That's not bad. Yeah. That's, that means that we had, you know, I mean, and then people, you always have to do the math because some people count Lewis and Salvador. Oh, because yeah. they're among the dead, but they weren't among the original party. Some right. people count the old lady who died at the very beginning sure. and who don't. But the story and the lore that starts immediately about the Donner Party is that they were a group of pretty good people and that this guy, Louis Kessberg, started mm -hmm. eating everybody, right? Yeah. He gets dragged back on the way back. I don't know if Kessberg, honestly, nobody knows what Kessberg did or didn't do, mm -hmm. right? He has his whole theory about how he was trying to help everybody. Yeah. He was just doing what anybody else would do. What I can tell you, it seems fairly certain, is that Louis Kessberg is fucking cursed because he lives for a long time after this. What? He gets to Sutter's Fort, and everyone's like, that's the fucking guy. But Foster and Eddie ate human. There's plenty of yeah. people who I ate, mean, they, and they just can't demonize him that Yeah, much. they all survived, but that's... Right. Oh. On the way back... He accidentally, Andy, finds his three-year-old daughter's body in the snow. According to him, because he in, he's interviewed by C.F. McGlashan. In fact, wow. he's C.F. McGlashan is the only person that Kessberg ever talks to about it. Wow. He talks with him one-on-one, -on -one and he writes a long letter explaining his perspective. And he talks about how... On the way back, he happened to like reach into the snow and felt fabric. And when he pulled up the fabric, it was the body of his daughter. And that, that was how he found out his daughter was dead. That's he gets to Sutter's Fort. He does a bunch of work for Sutter. He does a bunch of work for people, and nobody ever pays him. Okay. So that's kind of yeah. a bummer, right? Yeah. Eventually, he goes to Sacramento, and he opens a hotel. <laughs> oh. Which I, I get. Like it, a right? bed, I'm, a bed sure, I'm sure that he didn't put his name in. Bed and breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bed and breakfast. Uh, <laughs> one. If you don't get one, just, you can have the uh, other. No, he opens a hotel, and it does pretty well. And he sells it, and he gets some money. And it's the night of the Great Sacramento Fire, 1852. His hotel burns to the ground. His buyer is ruined. He loses his hotel. He never gets the money. Wow. He gets it together again, Andy. And he builds a brewery. And he calls it the Phoenix Brewery, out of the ashes, right? Sure. He builds a brewery. It does really well. He sells it for $50,000. He's got the $50,000, <laughs> and he's going back to fucking Germany, man, where nobody yeah. knows he ate babies. And it's the flood of 1861, and it destroys his brewery, and he loses everything, and he has to start all over again. He has 11 children. Wow. With the old Lana, the same gal. She dies, however. He's left to raise these kids alone, two of whom turn out to be, quote unquote, violent idiots. They're two young girls who can't function on their own and are so loud and crazy and violent that he can't live near other people and can't have, like, caregivers for them. His letter to C.F. McGlashan is amazing he speaks five languages wow and he says i speak five languages and in none of them can i articulate 
what I went through. He is not a savage, yeah, he's a crazy person, loser. That... He's an educated, hopeful articulate. He talks yeah. about, he goes, I know what everyone thinks. I know they think I murdered these right. people. I, they was robbing them. And he said, if I didn't have a clear conscience, I would have killed myself by now. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not. I know. And he even says, if I was in that situation again, I would know I would do the same thing again to survive. That's just mm -hmm. what I do. The entire Reed family survives. That's crazy. Every single motherfucking one of them. And I'd like you to go right back, if you can, to the edge of the Great Salt Lake. <laughs> When they sent yeah. Reed off, and she was like, you son of a bitch, you come back. He did. Yeah. He fucking did. That is an incredible story of survival. And let's not forget, he did that pass about four times. Our guy Foster, Foster and yeah. Eddie, yeah. they came back and forth so many times, finding utter devastation each time and the, and the lowest behavior of the human spirit and still continued to come back. People like John Stark... <laughs> Carrying these children he's never met up and down snowy hills. Stanton, the hero, you know, of this story. Man, why is this called the Donner Party? I... It doesn't make any sense at all. At so the what end should we call? It. Okay, so what should we call it? I'd call it the the the. I mean, if anything, if you put Donner in there, it should be tragedy. I mean, the Reed. The Donner tragedy. The the Reed story. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of there's people. There's a lot of people. There's 80, the over 80 The people. situation in the mountains. You just get the rich people to get their name on it. I know. Like Patrick Dolan? Yeah. Come on. Like, oh, you're right. Take a lick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Aw. I know. Or Kessberg. You couldn't call it the Kessberg party. Although this I mean, was what I thought, because it was actually when they first set out and like early on, they called it the mm -hmm. Reed slash Donner party. Yeah. And I wonder if once the story became synonymous with death and cannibalism, they, they took didn't Reed drop out. Reed yeah. out of respect. Yeah, that makes like, sense. He doesn't want his name on this thing. That does, actually. That tracks. But this wow. is the other thing. As I've been reading this history, and it's been, um, as I've told you, a dark and glorious thing to, uh -huh. to be a part of for yeah. all this stuff. One of the things that's happening right now is you and I are recording. It is winter of 2022, and we are about to get into the worst of winter. It is early December. We are right now at the time of year that the forlorn hope started strapping up their fucking snowshoes to see. Yeah. And as of this week, two things that, again, just keep circulating in my mind. One is our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Yeah. And how even today, winter is a part of warfare. And removing from human beings their access to electricity... And our technology, the things that allow us to survive in these climates, is an act of war. Because mammals, war mammals, we oh. don't live in these environments. If we even try, we hibernate or we migrate. We don't just hunt on top of the snow mm -hmm. as mammals. Not many of us, anyway. And even your little snow foxes and shit are kind of hibernating and like hiding under the snow. Like yeah. they are highly yeah. evolved for exactly yeah. this kind of thing. So it is, you know, the, and the other one was the one that just happened last week with the attack on the, South Carolina's the power, power grid. grid. Yeah. Yeah. So before one starts looking at a history like the Donner Party and thinking this is ancient history, it's only ancient <laughs> Yeah. until you run out of gas, girl. Now we're going to go get lunch. Mm, hungry? We're gonna just... <laughs> Oh. And that, my friend Andy Kraft, is the conclusion to the hilf of the Donner Party. That was good. That was a sad story. It's not it's not <laughs> great. I can't think of anyone on this I, I don't know why. I don't know why I had fun. Yeah, no, it was incredibly fun. It was it fun. Was, I feel like I've been through something now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we'll do another shot. Yeah. We'll yeah. hold hands. Yeah. And then we're going to eat a sandwich. We have a deep cry. A deep and cry. Just a deep and cry. maybe some thank. This is, yeah. you know how like people say the Thanksgiving is kind of bullshit. I mm -hmm. think that we should just slowly start to make our Thanksgiving holiday more about the Donner party. <laughs> Not that we eat each yeah. other. I don't think we should put babies on the table or anything. Yeah. But as a like, you have food. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Be thankful. Thankful. Oh, hell yeah. To my guest, Andy Kraft, to C.F. McGlashan for collecting and writing such an illuminating source, and to you, dear listener, for joining us. 
May the story of the Donner Party inspire all of us to help ease the hunger and want of those around us and to head into the next frontier, whatever it may be, with a greater sense of both our fragility and our strength. Speaking of which, Hilf is taking a short winter break and will return with new episodes on February 1st. The family is moving! It's only across town, and we have a much better rig than a covered wagon, but it's still going to be a huge time-sucking pain in the ass. So, (laughs) we'll see you on the other side. In the meantime, our theme song was composed and performed by Kat Perkins. A reminder that you can find my sources, links to the books, documentaries, and articles I reference in the summary of this episode or by emailing us hilfpodcast at gmail.com or messaging us on social media at hilfpodcast. This has been Hilf. History I'd like to fuck with Don Brody. I'm Don Brody, reminding you that history is a party and everybody's coming. Happy New Year. (laughs) 